Greetings in the Messiah Yahweh, whom the King James Bible says Christ Jesus. And we do appreciate each and every one of you that have tuned in again to this program. And we believe it will be a real blessing to you. The last broadcast, we were talking about the word I am that I am in our King James Bible. And as we say every week, we read from a King James Bible, we study from a King James Bible, because the King James Bible itself is one of the best translations there is. And the reason why I say this so much is because we have different people that each week tunes in and they've never even heard of most of the stuff that we're getting on. And we've not had no negative uh, feedback, kickback, or ever what you want to say whatsoever. Because, you know, all we're doing, we're just taking the King James Bible and we're trying to find out who the God of Israel is. The church is being taught through a tradition that God has many names. Then when we read in St. John 5, 43, where the Messiah said, I come in my Father's name, it dumbfounds them. They don't even know what to think because the church is being taught that God, as the King James Bible says, has many names. This whole program is to do one thing. It's to help get the true assembly back to what the early assembly, the first century assembly that was taught by the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers taught. So we've got to understand that our King James Bible has two testaments in it. It has what's known as the Old Testament, which is really known in Hebrew as the Dom Haberit, or some would say Dom Berit, which actually means blood covenant. And then our New Testament is known as the Dom Berit HaKadashah, which is the blood of the true Messiah shedding His blood, taking us from one testament or one covenant into another covenant, and it takes blood. And it took the blood of the Messiah. And when you can take this name, and if you've been listening to this program, any, we put emphasis, this is the name of the God of of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What shocks the world is this. When you say this, wrapped himself in a robe of flesh, it shakes the world. When you understand that when that Mashiach walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago, and he was given this name. This is the name that every sacrifice that was ever sacrificed was only done in this name. We're taught today all these different names that the Messiah has. Why? It's because this has been covered up. Why is it that the day and hour we're living in, you have what is known as oneness, then you have known as the Trinity doctrine. Once you begin to study this and search this out, 
What has brought all of this confusion? Why is it that you have all these denominations and organizations? Why? Once this was covered up, and it's covered up in your King James Bible, you find in your King James Bible where this should have been translated over to or into the English as being Yahweh nearly 7,000 times, they've covered it up with the word Lord, L-O-R-D, capital letters. God, G-O-D, capital letters. Then when the Messiah come in his Father's name, you'd understand that he was talking about Yahweh. Then when the angel come down and named and give that son a name, you would have understood it would have been that. But see, we're taught all these different names, such as Yeshua. Some will say Yehoshua. Some will say Yahoshua. Some will say Jesus. Some will say Jesus. And some will say Jesus. But what was that true Mashiach? What was his name nearly 2,000 years ago? And the church doesn't even know it because this was hid. You wouldn't have all this confusion today if a cover-up had not come in. We're going to be talking about these cover-ups in the broadcast to come. We're going over to the book of Exodus. We're going to be using a red-letter edition King James Bible and we're going to understand this in the Old Testament so we can understand the true Mashiach in the New Testament, what we call New Testament. But again, let me say it this way. It takes blood to bring a testament in. When the Messiah walked on the face of this earth nearly 2,000 years ago, and you had, the, you take the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, actually the majority of those books gives witness of the Messiah living under the Old Testament. The only only part of those books that really gives witness to a New Testament is once His blood was starting to be shed at Calvary. Then it would take the death, burial, and resurrection to complete everything. So once you understand that after the resurrection of the Messiah, this is really, it took all of this to bring everything in. So the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John overall give witness under the Old Testament. What we call, when we read our King James Bible, the Old Testament, what's actually known in Hebrew as Dom Habarit, which means the blood covenant. So the word Dom is blood, and the word Habarit means the covenant. So for us to understand when the Messiah walked on the face of this earth, and then after His resurrection, His death, burial, and resurrection, what would bring the the assembly in? Do you know that the Gentiles were really not even converted till several, several, several years later after the Holy Spirit was poured on or poured out and was poured on the Israeli people. This message of the plan of salvation belongs to Israel. The Gentiles gets it by the grace and the mercies of Yahweh. And the Gentiles today needs to be taught the plan of salvation that Israel knows, but they're not. What is so sad is that through tradition, 
this name has been covered up. I said, this name, the name of Yahweh has been covered up. People today will holler, hallelujah. The word hallelujah is a Hebrew word that means praise. The word yah is the first two letters, the yud and the hey. In other words, that would be known as a short form of the name of Yahweh. It's used, the short form yud hey is used about 40, I believe around 46 times, give or take, in a Hebrew Tanakh. Ask people today, why do they say hallelujah? Most people really has no answer because really nowhere from Genesis to Revelations do you find the word hallelujah. Go to the book of Revelation, you find the word hallelujah used about four times. But literally, hallelujah, you will not find in a King James Bible. Going over to the book of Exodus 3.14, we dealt with this in the last broadcast. It says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thy say unto the children of Israel. This world is big. But Yahweh Almighty, through the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are known as Avraham, Yitzchak, or Yaakov, whose name was changed to Yisrael. When you really begin to look at this, this is the big earth, this is the big world. And this big world... Yahweh took one man known as Avram, changed his name to Avraham, and dealt with him and promised him a seed. Can you imagine that seed not knowing the name of their creator who made a covenant with Abraham? Can you imagine that? This kind of stuff's being taught today. I said, this kind of stuff's being taught today. No prophet in the Old Testament, none of the Nevi'im of the Old Testament, in other words, none of the prophets of the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, ever taught such a thing. The prophets would speak in this name. It was never to be covered up. Now, it goes on and it says, I am have sent me unto you. In other words, thus shall, thus shall thy say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. All three places where you see the word I am here in 3 and 14 of the book of Exodus, it's the Hebrew word, that I had up here, and I'm going to show it again. This here is the Hebrew word, eh, yeah. This word right here is where the King James Bible translates it as I am. This word, asher, is the Hebrew word where the King James Bible translates it, translates it as that. Some will translate it as what. Some will translate it as that which. But then again, it reads the word agyash. So in Hebrew, we understand. Of course, I had to blow this up, and I explained this the other week, so you would be able to see this. In Hebrew, Hebrew reads from right to left, and actually it would be saying, agyash, asher, agyash. So I wanted to blow it up so you'd get a good look at this. This is what's written in a Hebrew Tanakh. When you hear people talk about I am that I am, this is what it looks like in Hebrew. I am that I am. They have made this word here a name. 
and they have tried to do away with this. We're going to be talking about this. We may not get on this today because there's a lot to this here. Continue reading, reading here. It says that, where it says, I am have sent me unto you. Again, you have the word here in 3 and 14 of the book of Exodus, the word I am used three times. All three places is this word right here. Eh, yeah. All right. Now, you find some translations. Some will say, I am who I am. Some will say, I am what I am. And some will say, I am that which I am. But at the same time, it's a translation trying to explain that He is everything. And we believe that. And I believe you believe that. And I believe that's why Yahweh Almighty's got you to listen to this broadcast. It's because He's wanting to help you just like He's wanting to help us. See, we're on a journey. We're not going to get locked down with traditions and doctrines of men. Yahweh's going to take His assembly in this end time and going to take her back to exactly what was taught nearly 2,000 years ago. And we're going to be studying in the future on how the assembly has went through a lot of changes. And it will be a real blessing to you. Now, going over, and, and I, I'm getting excited about this. I am really getting excited about this. Because I have got to understand I am, or the Hebrew word, agah, to understand this verse that we're going to in the book of St. John. 8. 56. Now, sometimes I get on these broadcasts and I think, well, I have a plan. And I do. I get on here. And I don't want to get on here without a plan. But once I get on here, things change a little bit. You want to, you want to fall under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But in the book of St. John, 8.56. Now, I'm getting us out of the tradition. I'm getting us out of a tradition and we're going to have to understand who the I am is. Now, St. John 8.56, this is the Messiah doing the talking. If you can, get your Bibles. Study along with us. I believe this will be a blessing, a blessing to you. You know, I, 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 I've, I'm just getting excited about this every time I look at this 8.56 right here. This is the Messiah doing the talking. The Messiah says, Your father, Abraham, or as the King James says, Abraham. Now, when we look at this, who's Abraham? They knew who Abraham was. Do you know who Abraham is? Do you know that Abraham knew this? Do you know that Abraham knew who this was? He knew that this here would fulfill this. He was everything. I said, this is everything. This here is giving witness to this. This here is the one that says, I am that I am. In other words, hey, yeah, I'll share. He was doing the talking here in 3 and 14 of Exodus. My, my, my. This, this here just gets you excited. Now, I want to I say this again. This here that's being covered up today, this here is saying, I am that I am, or in Hebrew, ah, yeah, asher, ah, yeah. He's doing the talking. They've covered him up. He's covered up in the King James Bible in translations. They've covered him up with the word L-O-R-D in capital letters. G-O-D in capital letters. Can you imagine that? Now, here is the Messiah. He's looking at these Israeli people. And he's saying, Your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. 
and he saw it and was glad. Now, I'm hoping that in several broadcasts, which is going to be away, that we're going to be able to go over and show how Yahweh Almighty through the flesh of the true Mashiach revealed himself, he revealed himself to Abraham. Now think about this. You're either going to believe this or you're not going to believe it. The Messiah said in St. John 8, 56, your father Abraham, or as the King James says, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Now, wait a minute. Here's a Mashiach that was born of a virgin, and we definitely believe in a virgin birth. Here is a Mashiach that's walking on the face of this earth, and he's looking at these Israeli people and he's saying that Abraham rejoiced to see my day, in other words, and he saw it and was glad. Now that alone is enough to stunt you, dumbfound you. Here is a man. Now listen to this next verse. 857 says this. Then said the Jews unto him. Talking about the Messiah. The Jews said unto the Mashiach. Now this was nearly 2,000 years ago now. This was before the Messiah was crucified. They said, Thy Art not get fifty years old, and has thy seen Abraham? Wow, folks, listen to this. Here is a Mashiach that actually didn't even get baptized till he was thirty years old, and I don't know if it was two years, three years that he was crucified roughly between being age 32 or 33. Somewhere really around that time. But they're acknowledging this man's not even yet 50 years old. In other words, how has Abraham seen you? This is what the Messiah said. Now listen to this next verse. Of course, King James says Jesus. And if you do any study, and you're going to find out that the name of Jesus itself is less than 250 years old. Never was even in the original 1611 King James Bible. See, we're being taught. We, what we got to do, we got to go back and find out 2,000 years ago who was here. 856 says, And Yahweh sitting unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, what is he saying here, folks? I took this word, and you can do it too. Look this word up in your King James Bible that's written here in the New Testament where it uses the word I am when the Messiah said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham or before Abraham was, I am. Look that word up there in the New Testament. That word is a Hebrew word, uh, uh, excuse me, is a, is a word that means I am, be, I was, have been, to be, to exist, to happen, 
to be present. When you look at this, do you know what the Mashiach is actually saying? That. At that time, they understood that he was eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Think about this. Now, once you can really get a hold of this, how could that flesh that's less than 50 years old be eh, yeah? And he come in his father's name, Yahweh. Now, understand this here. This is what it's talking about in St. John 8, 56, when, when he said, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. This is the word he's using, ag yeah. This is what is actually dumbfounded in them. Here's a robe of flesh that's less than 50 years old. He says that I am, in other words, ag yeah, I am. Ah, yeah. How could Abraham see a robe of flesh less than 50 years old? See, I believe that this will be a blessing to you if you search this out. I said, if you'll search this out. Here is the true Messiah. I said, here is the true Mashiach. 2,000 years ago, identifying himself as this. And they have taken this and covered it up. But it looks like their time's come and gone. We have a CD that, and, and literature that we send out. And we have prayer cloths that we send out. We believe that the prayer cloths will be a blessing to you. Physically, financially, family problems, ever what it is. And they'll give the address, telephone number. Of course, all this is popping up. Uh, as we're talking, and we do appreciate each and every one of you, it looks like their time has come and gone, so till the next broadcast at the same time, we appreciate you, we love you, shalom. You have just heard Hour of Truth with Brother Jerry. If you would like a copy of today's broadcast on DVD, of prayer cloth or other information, phone 770-784-0703. Or write 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia, 30014. Until next week, we bid you Shalom.